and look at the camera. The goal for today is to look at the camera and not awkwardly off to the side and ignore the fact that you guys are here. Hello Internet, Mo here and today I'm doing the book jacket tag. I was tagged by A Hermit's Progress, whose channel is great by the way, so if you haven't watched any of her videos, definitely go check them out. And the original tag video was made by Two Paper Girls, and I will leave links to both of those videos down below. Um, on to the questions. Question number one, a book that you bought purely because of the title. So for this question, I'm going to go with The Wise Woman and Other Stories by George MacDonald. Uh, George MacDonald wrote back in the 19th century, so all of his work is now public domain, so I could have read it for free on the internet. I did not need to buy a copy of this, but it's really pretty. Um, and this is a collection of fairy tale-like stories. Um, it's really cute. Yeah. Number two, what is your favorite book cover series? Now, as I mentioned in my recent video where I did the classics tag, I actually am not a huge fan of book cover series. I prefer my book collection to be sort of eclectic, um, but I didn't run across a series that I like recently, and that is the SF Masterworks series. Um, and so they're all sci-fi titles, and they all have different illustrations, which I think is part of the reason I like it, because they're not the same. Um, but I really like most of the illustrations. I think they're really cool, such as this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, and so many more guys. They're just, they're great. Number four, number three, we're on number three. A cover design change that really annoys you. Wait for it. Movie design covers, guys. Not okay. Like, look at this this beautiful illustrated cover for book number three, right? And then the movie cup. No, not okay. Any any movie cover, just I don't like them. And yes, it makes me very sad that my Narnia set does not match. I will fix this eventually. Question number four. Name a book where you prefer a different country's cover. So I don't normally pay attention to different country covers. Uh, I'm slightly more aware of it now that I'm on booktube, um, but I generally don't actually pay that much attention to covers, guys. <laughs> so I'm not really sure for this one. The only one I can think of right now is the Mistborn series by Brandon Sanderson. I do like the British cover for that series better than the American covers. Question number five. Uh, name a book where the cover does not represent what the story is about. So for this one, I'm going to go with The Grey Horse by R.A. McAvoy. Um, the edition that I have at least, it's just this green cover and then it's got this little circular like cutout of a painting picture where the knight on a horse and his head is like cut off. I don't know why, but the only thing that it has in common with the book is that there's a horse in it. Uh, <laughs> because this book is actually a historical fantasy set in 19th century Ireland um, with a shape-shifting fairy and like political intrigue and stuff. So I, I don't know why this cover is the way it is. Question number six. A book with an exciting blurb that was ended up being an underwhelming book. So for this one, I'm going to go with Magic Under Glass by Jacqueline Dolomar. Uh, and I have the blurb right here. It says, Namira is a foreign music hall girl forced to dance for mere pennies. When wealthy sorcerer Holland Perry hires her to sing with a piano playing automaton, Namira believes it is the start of a new and better life. In Perry's world, however, buried secrets are beginning to stir. Unsettling below stairs rumors swirl about ghosts, a madwoman rubbing the halls, and Perry's involvement with a league of sorcerers who torture fairies for sport. Then, Namira discovers the spirit of a fairy gentleman named Eris is trapped inside the clockwork automaton, waiting for someone to break his curse. So, I basically heard fairy who's turned into a piano playing automaton and went, that's going to be awesome. And I read this book and I did like it, but it wasn't as good as I had hoped it would be, so it was underwhelming in that sense. Question number seven. A book you picked up because of an interesting or intriguing title. So for this one, I'm going to go with In the Cities of Coin and Spice 
by Catherine M. Valenti. Um, and I had read a book or two by her before I saw this one, and so I was attracted by her name as well as by the title, but I thought the title was really cool. And then I discovered that it's actually the second book in a duology. Um, and so I ended up getting both books, but they are Arabian Nights retellings and they're awesome. So, and the last question, number eight, show off your top five book covers. So in my recent video where I did the classics book tag, I did show off a lot of my pretty books in that one. So I've decided for this tag, I'm going to do different book covers than I did in that video. So if you're interested in seeing my other pretty books, you can go watch the classics one. I'll leave it tagged, tagged, linked. I'll leave it linked down below. Um, but for now, I'm going to do other ones. So the first one I have to share with you guys, uh, it's not just for the cover, but kind of for the whole book because it's really pretty. And that is the Universal Penman. Uh, and this is a 19th century uh, compilation of sort of scripts and fonts, I guess you would say. And what happened is the guy who um, put it together sent out for a whole bunch of different people to write example pages for him, and then he had them turned into engravings and printed as a book. So this is basically a collection of a whole bunch of different people's handwriting. Um, and they wrote different little quotes or sort of maxims, etc and decorated them with swirlies and awesomeness. And some of them also, let's see if I can find a good example, did pictures. Oh, here's one where he made a bird out of little swirly pen marks and they're just really pretty. So yeah, really just love looking at this book. The rest of the books that I have to share with you, I don't actually have uh, physical copies of with me right now. Some of them are Kindle books and some of them are at my parents' house and not with me. Uh, the first of which is Thorn by Intisar Kanani. This is a fairy tale retelling of the Goose Girl fairy tale, but it's set in partially in like a Northern European-ish country and then partially in a sort of India-esque location. And the cover is just so pretty. The colors are just, they're beautiful. The cover was part of the reason that I got this book. I will admit that. Uh, the next one is Paralandra by C.S. Lewis. This is the second book in his space trilogy. Um, and I actually have this trilogy as a bind up with all three of them together, which is kind of huge and not great. I don't really like bind ups because I prefer my books to fit easily into my purse so that I can carry them around and read them whenever I want to. And bind ups don't do that. But I am glad that my bind up has the cover from book number two and not from one or three because I definitely prefer this one. It's just super cool. Uh, the next one is Beowulf. This is translated by Seamus Heaney and it's cool for a number of reasons. One of them being that it's actually a side by side translation. So on the left hand page, it is in Anglo-Saxon and on the right hand page, it's in a more modern English. And I just really enjoyed being able to look at the Anglo-Saxon, even though I can't read it. Maybe someday. Probably not. Um, but the cover on this book is, firstly, it's really nice to look at, but I love the texture of it because each of the little like rings in the chainmail is actually raised. So like you can feel it and it's cool. Yeah. And the last one, I wouldn't say that this is a beautiful cover, but it's definitely very uh, striking, <laughs> and that is uh, my HP Lovecraft collection that I have, and it's got this sort of like Cthulhu skull illustration on the front, which doesn't make a ton of sense because Cthulhu would have to die for his skull to be, yeah, I don't know, but it's definitely a very stunning picture, and I think it represents the collection quite well. So yeah, those are the books that I have to share with you guys for today. Uh, let me know what your favorite book cover is down below. Uh, and oh, I'm supposed to tag people, aren't I? I'm, I will think about who I'm going to tag and I will leave those links down underneath because I don't know right now. I just, I always forget to do this. Yeah. Anyways, until next time, guys, happy reading and bye.